Good morning, everybody. This is Michelle with Creative Operation, and I'm here today to share with you my design team project for Country Craft Creations using the exclusive Retro Men paper. And uh, I'm excited to bring this project. When I um, shared my prototype, uh, it seemed like everybody thought it was a really cool idea, especially with Father's Day coming up. So I thought that I would try and get this out there. And then I also have a folio. And if everything goes right today, I'll have both of them out today so that you can um, have all three of the tutorials using this paper out before Father's Day and have some time to make it. So um, again, this is the Retro Men paper collection by Country Craft Creations. It's exclusive and it is absolutely gorgeous. I mean, the colors are beautiful and they're just really awesome retro patterns and images that are just absolutely stunning. So I also wanted to share with you, because I'm going to use one of the sheets in the project today, the coordinating cardstock that you can order separately from Country Craft Creations. And this is my colors, and they're just absolutely gorgeous colors. The papers um, are just gorgeous. Now, two of them, these two right here, have a shimmer to them. And then the green has kind of the raised embossed dots on them. And then a couple of the solids that go with it. So you can get this as a pack to coordinate with your papers. And you can see they match absolutely beautifully with this paper. Um, today, I will be using one of the colors. I'll be using this um, teal color and this one is called let me get it right tropical splash so um, I will be using this one um, today for our tutorial now what we're going to be making today is this desk organizer um, I showed my husband the papers and I asked him I said you know if I was to make you something what would you want and he says I really need a desk caddy for my man cave so um, I kind of you know this is my prototype and I did change it a little bit for the tutorial but this is this is what I shared as you know kind of a sneak peek of what we're going to be making so um Anyways, this one is using Authentique's Manly Collection that I did also get from Country Craft Creations. And it's a really awesome, beautiful, uh, masculine type paper as well. Um, so anyway, he wanted something that would hold pens and, and his markers and everything. And then he also wanted something that would hold his remotes. So I wanted it to be... Excuse me, I can't talk today. I wanted it to be kind of sturdy for him. So um, I did make a chipboard kind of case to put the uh, compartments in. And then that way, when he puts his remotes in there, and let me show you what that would look like, um, you know, he could totally, you know, have a little bit of sturdiness to the remotes. Now, his are a little bit thinner than mine, um, but you get the idea. So anyway, um, that's what we're going to be making today. And again, this paper here is Authentique Manly, and I did get this from Country Craft Creations. Um, today, we are going to be using the exclusive collection Retro Men. So we'll get started with making the small compartments. And before I get going, I just wanted to also remind you that uh, tomorrow is the last day for the contest. So Country Craft Creations, um, Tammy is giving us a great um, opportunity for a contest. So for the last two weeks, anybody who ordered and then mentioned a designer in the comments before they checked out is entered to win $50 gift certificate if that designer wins. So the designer that gets the most mentions gets a $50 gift certificate. And then also one of the people that mentioned her gets put in a contest or put in a drawing. And one of those people will also win a $50 gift certificate. So today and tomorrow, if you are inclined to do so, um, please go to Country Craft Creations and make an order. And then before you check out, there should be a comment box and just say that Michelle sent you and we will both be entered for a drawing for $50. So I just wanted to let you know that. So let's get started with the small compartments. I did make two of them and we're gonna make the third one together. So the small front boxes, you will need three pieces of cardstock that are seven and an eighth by 12. So when you get your cardstock, you're gonna put it in your scoreboard and you're gonna grab your scoring tool and you're gonna score it at two and seven eighths five and three quarters, eight and five eighths, and 11 and a half. So we'll go through that again, and you're gonna score at two and seven eighths, five and three quarters, eight and five eighths, 
and 11 and a half. And then you're going to turn it and you're going to score at four and a quarter. All right. So that's all the scoring that you will need to do for that. And then what you're going to do is let's take this off for now and I'll just put it there for you. So we're going to do a little bit of trimming. But first, before we trim, we're going to do some marking on it. So what we're going to do is take our ruler and we're going to make the angle because you can see that the boxes are taller in the back and smaller on the sides. Um, so what we're going to do is make some cuts. So we're going to first... I'm going to do this so I can see it. Grab your scoring or your ruler, excuse me, and mark three inches. The front is three inches tall. Mark up from the score line. So this score line here, mark it three inches. And then we're going to skip this square because this will be the back of the box. And we're going to go to this square here. And we're going to mark again at three inches. And then we're going to skip down to the very last where the half tab is and we're going to mark again at three inches and so then let's draw some lines here this is where you're going to cut your box so i'm just putting my pencil at the score line and i'm lining up my three inch pencil mark and making a line and then on the last one it's going to go straight across because this will end up being the front of the box so just go straight across okay so you should have when you have it all scored the smaller boxes on the bottom your half inch tab here on the right and then you're going to have a three inch mark here you're going to draw all the way up to that score line and make an ag angle and then you'll do it from here up make an angle and then this whole piece will be cut off so then when we trim this we're going to make a little we're just going to go up an angle a little bit to that pencil line and then we're going to cut straight across and then angle up all the way to that score like that Okay, so you'll have a piece that looks like this. When this gets folded, this will be the back of the box, the sides, and then this will be the front of the box. These are gonna create the bottom of the box. Now what we're gonna do is we're going to make some of them in a tab, but we're also going to create a square bottom, and we're going to be able to paper this before we even put it together, so that's gonna be kind of easy to do. Um, so you cut straight up these two scores right here. So, we're going to keep the square with the back of the box. So we're going to just leave this straight up. We're going to angle this side here just a little bit. Okay, so I just angled that. And then we're going to do the other two as well. So we're just going to cut an angle there. And then just cut these out at a little bit of an angle all the way up to that score line. And then these will help form the bottom of the box. Now the cool thing about this project, if you do not want to make the chipboard base for it, you absolutely don't have to, depending on what you want to put in it. If you're just going to put like pens and pencils and maybe some notepads or something like that, you really don't need the sturdiness of the chipboard. But since he really wanted to put his remotes in there I wanted to make sure that it was going to be sturdy enough to where it won't tip over when he does that okay so once you have this then flip it over so that we're on the inside of our box and then we're going to grab some pattern paper and we're going to cover the inside of the box completely and then um, put it together because we're going to cover the outsides after the fact, but we need the insides covered. Now you can see inside, that's where I use the My Colors cardstock for the inside bottom and the inside front. Okay, so you're going to grab some papers and here I have a list here. So for your, your my abbreviations, PP is pattern paper. So for all three of these smaller boxes, you will need six pieces that are four and one sixteenth by two and three quarters. These are the sides of the, you know, the insides of the box. And they need to be four and one sixteenths, which is one line past four inches. Um, because of the angle we're gonna cut, we wanna make sure we mat it and it fits properly. And then you will need three pieces that are four and an eighth by two and three quarters. And that will make the back 
of our box. And then the cardstock, now you could use pattern paper if you wanted to, but I just chose to use the cardstock. Um, you'll need three pieces that are two and seven eighths by two and three quarters. That'll be the front, so the inside front of the box there. And then you'll need three pieces that are two and three quarters by two and three quarters. That'll be the bottom of the box, okay? Um, now I will have all the directions down below like I always do so you can you don't have to like be crazy and write this all down um you know too quickly but it is down below. So once you get your pieces cut we're going to just glue them to the inside of the box. Now, how do you cut these pieces? So this piece is the 4 and 16th by 2 and 3 quarters. So basically all I did was I measured up and let me give you the exact measurement here. I measured up two and seven eighths from the bottom, made a mark, and then just cut the angle off, just like that. So that's all you're gonna need to do to go ahead and create the sides of that box. And then we have the side and the bottom. So the bottom square is the two and three quarters by two and three quarters. That's gonna go there. And then this is going to be, if I get it in the right orientation, it's gonna be there. So again, when you are cutting your sides, you want four and sixteenths by two and three quarters, and then you're gonna measure up two and seven eighths, and you're just going to simply um, cut that diagonal off, and that's going to give you the perfect angle for your pattern paper. Just make sure that you have the orientation correctly for your pattern paper when you do that, so you don't end up with like you know the piece that you want being the opposite way. I hope that makes sense. So that's all you need to do for that. Um, then what we're going to do is glue all these things together. Let me get this out of the way here. And let's see, I'm going to put that there, keep this here. Let's glue these in place super quick. And then um, I do want to say, <laughs> I loved this paper. This paper was so cute. Um, my husband is not a big fisherman. Um, he is a guitar player. So he does like cars, of course. Um, what guy pretty much doesn't. Um, so I, I chose these papers to kind of fit him, but that is kind of the beauty of this paper collection because no matter what the man that you're making this for, the man in your life is into, you can totally make this happen. So again, I am gluing this to the inside of the box. Now the other thing I want to mention is that for the, the back of the boxes, because they're going to show um, more so than any of the other boxes in here. So these first set of boxes, I really um, wanted to use this image that was on the paper, okay? So it was really a super cute image. And what I did was um, I cut the backs like in continuity with this pattern paper. And then I used the back side of it to do the sides. So I'll give you an example here. Let me show you what it looks like. So when I cut the papers, I cut the bottom off so that the back of my boxes will make that, you know, uh, picture, I guess, in continuity. I hope you can see that. Um, and then the funny thing was, is that my husband always says that he has gear acquisition syndrome gas. So what that means is that being a guitar player, he's constantly buying, you know, um, new pedals or amps or whatever it is that he buys. And, you know, I just say, okay, honey, whatever you need, because it's his hobby and his passion. And it's like my paper crafting. And so whatever, you know, he needs to get, he gets. And <laughs> <laughs> that way I get what I want too. So anyway, um, so because of that, I just thought that was hilarious to have that gas sign there because of his gear acquisition syndrome and all the stuff that he buys. So there you have it. Um, so once you get it, I just had to explain that. So you don't necessarily have to like do the picture in continuity. You can do whatever you want, but that's why I did it. Um, I just thought it was funny. And then when I showed him what I was going to do, he cracked up. He thought it was cute too. So there you go. It was perfect. So I'm just kind of folding and mitering. I didn't do this before. You certainly could do it before if you want. Um, I just chose not to. Um, so once you get this done, 
Okay, so we'll fold and burnish all of our score lines and then just fold this side over, fold this side over, and we're gonna glue the tab to the outside. So super easy peasy. Put a little bit of glue here. Glue that down. Okay, so now we have the base of our box. And then all we're gonna do is we're gonna turn this upside down and we're going to build our box. So we have the bottom already covered, so we're just gonna put that to the inside and then that's squared. So that should help keep our box fairly square when we do this, okay? So I'm just going to put a little bit of glue here and then I'm gonna fold this side down and put a little glue here. Fold this side down and then I'm gonna do it one more time. And then with art glitter glue, it doesn't dry, I mean, it dries fast, but it gives you a few minutes. So I'm just gonna take my scoreboard and I'm gonna use the sides of it to kind of make sure it's kind of, my box is squared up. I'm just pushing it into the corner. And then I'm gonna grab this little tool that I made and I'm just gonna press that down and make sure we get a good stick. Now this tool, I actually got the idea from um, Tammy at Country Craft Creations. So she has a tool that somebody had made her that was a dowel with one of the furniture feet on it. And I didn't have like, you know, um, I think hers was round, but I didn't, I didn't have a big one. I had four little round doyle, uh, um, dowels. So I taped them together with some fabric tape that I had. And then I had a foot pad that I just put on and then squared it up. And then that's what I've been using. And it works really good for getting down in there and pressing down when you want to glue something together. Okay, so now I have my three boxes, and if we line them up, that's what's gonna, that's what you're gonna see. Really pretty. So since the first box is, you know, the one that you're really gonna see, I chose to cover all of the sides of it. Now the other ones, I'm just gonna cover the backs and the side of them because you won't really see behind. So we're not gonna cover those with anything. Okay, so then we just need to glue these together, and we're just simply going to glue them together. So I'm just going to put some glue on here. And then I'm also going to use my scoreboard for this as well. And I'm just going to push them together and then make sure they're nice and lined up. And then you can use some clamps here at the top to help secure it. And then I'm just going to give it a minute to kind of set and then we'll glue the other side and then these will be done and then we'll just um, put them aside and we'll make our other box. So I'm going to finish this part and then I'll be back in just a minute. So I glued the boxes together so that's what they're gonna look like. We're just gonna let them sit and finish you know, drying um, but that's what the first set of boxes will look like. So we'll just put those aside and then we're gonna go ahead and get started with the other boxes so we're gonna have our middle box here now our middle box and when I say middle box I'm talking about this particular one right here okay this one in the middle so this one is um, going to be a piece of cardstock that's 10 and 5 8 by 10 and then the pattern paper that you'll need for this you'll need one piece that's eight and a half by four and five eighths and two pieces that are four and five eighths by seven and an eighth Okay, so I'm gonna put that there for just a second. You're gonna grab your scoreboard, and when you put this in your scoreboard with the 10 and the 5 eighths at the top, you're going to score at one, and then turn it around and score at one again. And then, when you put it in with the 10 inch at the top, you will score at four and a quarter and five and a quarter. Okay, now when you look at this, this is going to give you two different sizes. You're going to, because remember, when we do, we're doing this, we're making an angle on the sides. So we're going to angle the sides of this as well. One side will be four and a quarter, okay, and the other side will be four and three quarters. So that is absolutely correct. So don't panic if you look at it and you think it's not centered. It's not supposed to be centered. So don't worry about that part. Okay, when you take this out, what we're gonna do is just make a few simple cuts here. So these middle squares, you know, right here, we're going to trim those. So we're going to just cut straight up 
and then make a tab. So straight up and make a tab on both sides. All right, so you should have something that will, excuse me, look like that. And then straight up, tab. Straight up, okay. So we have those pieces cut out like that. So then let's go ahead and fold and burnish because we're actually going to use the box itself to create the angle, which is really easy to do. If I can pick it up. Okay. Let me fold and burnish these as well. I just think this organizer turned out really, really super cute. Okay. So now you have one side that will be four and three quarters. Okay, that's gonna be the back of the box. Four and a quarter is gonna be the front of the box. So when what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put this to the side, and this is how you're gonna cut your angle. So you're just gonna put this to the side for now. We're not gonna glue it quite yet. And I'm gonna take my pencil, and I'm just gonna mark where the top of the smaller side is on the side so you can see that little tick mark there and then we're just going to cut the angle up to the top all right and then when we glue it we'll glue the inside or the smaller side to the inside and then you'll have that nice angle there okay and then this tab here will glue inside as well and that'll help create some strength all right, so let's do that again on the other side. So we're gonna fold, we're gonna fold the shorter side to the outside just so we can get our measurement and make sure it's nice and square. We're gonna take our pencil, draw a little tick mark there, and then cut it up. To that score and create our angle, okay? So then the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna grab our papers. now. Um, I did make a model to cut our pattern paper with, okay? So what I did was I cut a one inch piece because this is a one inch wide box and it's four and three quarters. And then I went ahead and made the same angle and then I took my pattern paper and I laid it on here, okay? So we're gonna have to trim it. So when I did this, so I want about a 16th of an inch on every side, on the sides, and then I want about an eighth of an inch at the bottom, and then that's going to give us pretty much the perfect um, angle to cut that off. Because then when we set it down, another 16th of an inch, that cut will go below the cardstock line. I hope that makes sense. So I'm just eyeballing this, but you can totally measure it if you want to. Um, but that's how I did this to cut the angle. And then you can see when you slide it down, it perfectly will mat the inside of that box. So I did that with both of them. And hopefully um, I did it. I did it exactly as I told you not to do it. So I'm going to have to redo that. Hold on just a second. All right, so remember when I told you to watch the orientation of your papers and I totally didn't do it? So I already have one cut for the right side. I need it to be the opposite angle for the other side, so please make sure that you do it the right way. So I've cut another strip, and I've got my paper turned the correct way so that I cut the angle right. I'm going to center this in the middle and then bring it up about an eighth of an inch. This is like the kind of the cheater way of doing it but then once you do it you don't have to do it again right and then I'm gonna cut that off and then my angle should be correct for the project and there it is so be careful of that see now I'm here to teach you what to do and what not to do so there you have it um, and then we have our big piece of paper that's going to be in the middle okay so I chose the car so let's go ahead and glue those down and then we'll make our box. Yay, yay, yay. You guys. <laughs> I 
I knew I was going to do that. I just knew it. And I, that's one of the reasons why I made sure to tell you not to do it. Because I knew I would. So anyways, that's, you know, if you have extra paper, then it fixes the problem. And there you have it. So. <laughs> but that's, uh, yeah. You learn by watching other people's mistakes sometimes. So there you go. I'm here to help you learn. <laughs> cracking myself up okay so let's get glue on this and again you do not have to put pattern paper on the inside of this one because guaranteed it's probably not going to show and now my glue bottle oh, there we go um because of the height of it it's going to be really hard to see so you don't have to and then this is all going to be glued together to the boxes before and after it and then it's also going to have a chipboard base if you choose to do that so you know you're going to have lots of strength i'm using artisan cardstock and it is um, brown so we're gonna we're gonna be good to go with um with strength okay so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to glue the tab to the outside of the small the front should I say and since it's cut straight up you should just be able to lay it down okay just like that and then we're gonna glue this one right over the top of that so I'm gonna go ahead I think I'm gonna just glue this one down too so it's gonna glue right over the small this will help keep everything nice and square now if you want to make sure that it's nice and square you know set it down on your table that straight cut will help it keep nice and square just match it to your page and then we'll just glue what did I do okay so what we're gonna do is it's really not gonna matter because this will be covered up with pattern paper okay so um, I actually intended to glue the insides and then put the pattern paper down that's what I had intended to do but that's not what's gonna happen so this is what I did it's not really actually it's not gonna be a big deal so we're just gonna glue that there okay so what we did was we glued the tab to the side and then we're gonna glue the short side to the outside and it's gonna like I said get covered with pattern paper so that's okay so what we're gonna do just to make sure that this doesn't show too much we're just gonna cut a little miter this is how we're gonna fix this problem too so there you go <laughs> ah, I am full of surprises today okay so here we go that's what we're gonna do so I'm gonna go ahead put the glue on here you guys we're gonna make this box no matter what I'm telling you what we're gonna do this and it's gonna work and it's gonna be beautiful okay so then I'm just gonna make sure that's glued down nice okay and then put some glue here it's easier to do it that way and I can wipe it off there we go okay so it's still gonna work you guys it's still gonna work it's still gonna work beautifully we're gonna cover the sides of pattern paper anyway so no big deal okay crafters you know we don't make mistakes we make opportunities for new things right and it's still gonna work all right so we have our box that's going to glue to there okay so you can see how that's gonna look right just like that okay so I'm gonna glue that together and then I'll be back and we're gonna make the other box and it's going to be um, we'll do it the right way this time how's that sound <laughs> all right I'll be back in a minute I have the middle box glued to the smaller front boxes so that's what it's gonna look like at this point all right I think it's looking really super cute so let's get the back box. Now this is basically the same, it's the same construction, just different size. This is gonna be a little bit wider, so it's one and an eighth inch on the sides, but that's okay. 
Um, so you're going to need one piece of cardstock that's 11 and an eighth by 10 and 7 eighths. And then for pattern paper, you will need an eight and a half by five and an eighth and two that are five and an eighth by seven. No, actually by an inch. I think I wrote that down wrong, but I think I cut it correctly if I, yeah, I did. So that should actually be one inch. So you need two that are five and an eighth by one inch okay so let's put that to the side and we'll grab our scoreboard and with the 10 and 7 eighths at the top we're going to score at an inch and an eighth on both sides inch and an eighth and then when we turn it where the 11 and an eighth is in the at the top we're going to score at four and three quarters and five and seven eighths. So that's going to give you a four and three quarter inch side. And then the other side will be five and one quarter. You're going to have one and an eighth inch here, one and an eighth inch on the side. All right. So now let's do this all the way I actually intended to do it this time. How's that sound? I am not going to edit this out. I'm going to let you guys see this because this is what happens. And it's okay, um, but we fixed it, so it's not gonna ruin the project. It would be devastating for me if I ruin the project because I don't know about you guys, but I hate it when I waste paper. I just hate it, especially like when I'm using the good stuff because this artisan cardstock, I tell you what, is something else. I love this cardstock. I will never go back. All of the other cardstock that I have been hoarding and, you know, collecting over the years until I found Artisan is now my practice paper. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> so, let's fold and burnish. All right. Fold and burnish. And then let's fold the sides up. Now I, I was always taught when you have a long score to kind of start in the middle and work your way out as far as when you burnish. Um, it's supposed to help keep things straighter. I don't know. Um, that's just what I was how I was taught and I keep doing it that way so that's good so again we're going to do the sides again so we can get our marks for the angle so we're going to fold it up so that the small side is on the outside and we're going to make our little pencil mark here on the edge so we can angle this up and it's dark I know you guys can't hardly see it and neither can I <laughs> to tell you the truth it is a little dark but that's okay all right and we're going to cut that up and we're gonna do that to the other side. So fold the short side over as if we were going to glue it down. And then on the front here, just make a little tick where that meets. And then angle that up to the score. So that'll give you the angle. We'll put the pattern paper on the inside. Okay, inside back. Okay, and put that down. Now, the way we did the other box was not really the way I intended to do it, but it worked out pretty good. Um, this other way we will put the pattern paper on the sides after the box is done, but then you won't have the short sides on the outside. So it's kind of like, I'll show you this way. This is the way that I actually intended to make it on this one. The way that I did this one was not really the way I intended on doing it, um, but that's okay. Um, you know, you can see and then figure out which one is easier for you. I'm going to just do it the way I intended. So we're going to glue the tabs to the back this time. And actually, well, it doesn't matter. I'm just going to set it down straight on my table 
okay? If they can glue to the inside or the outside, it doesn't really matter. And I'm just making sure that it's flat and I'm just folding my tab up and doing that. Okay, that'll help reinforce the bottom and then the sides will fold in and do that. So we'll put our glue down. So this way, if you do it this way, then none of the tabs, none of the cut edges are on the outside. Okay, so that makes it easier. And I'm gonna do, since this is a narrow box, I'm gonna do both sides. So I kind of get them both at one shot. All right, just do that. And do that. Matching up my sides. Okay. And then you can go in with a tool of your choice and just make sure that it's gonna stick. Okay. Now remember these outsides are gonna get covered with pattern paper anyway, so you know, whichever way you guys decide to do it is fine. This is the way I had intended it to, to be so that it's nice and smooth. So there's that. So now to cover the insides, I did the same thing. I made another model. So when you lay this down, the back of the box will be five and a quarter inch and the front of the box will be four and three quarters and it's one and an eighth inch wide. So I made a model and made the angle and then I'm just going to simply make the cuts. Now, I want this to be the side. So I need to make sure my angles are good. So this is like actually the way that I did it when I was getting it ready. So I take them and I fold them so that the right sides are facing and then I cut them both at the same time and then I'll get the angles that I want out of it. So I'm just gonna center it just like I did last time, about a 16th of an inch on the sides and about an eighth of an inch on the bottom, okay? Because we're gonna actually push it down just a little bit. And then we're going to just cut them both off at the same time. So I'm gonna just turn this over and cut it off. I hope this makes sense. If you have a way that works better for you, please do it. So then when you undo them, then you have one for each side, okay? And then I'm just gonna take my glue and we're gonna glue them to the insides. This will be a little bit trickier, but we'll lay that down and we'll get the angle that we want and it will cover the inside. I'm just gonna push down with this and make sure that it sticks. Okay, do the other side. Okay. Okay, like that. Okay, so, all right, so that's done. Now I'm gonna glue this to the back and then we will have our box created and then we can go ahead and cover the sides in the front and then we'll make the other side so I'll be back in just a minute so now I have my boxes are all glued together so I don't know if you can see this or not but the sides um, are smooth except for that middle box where I kind of made the boo-boo but it's gonna be covered with pattern paper so it's really not gonna matter so whichever way you decide to go ahead and cover this you can go ahead and do that <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so now what we're going to do is we're going to cover just the sides and the front of this because the back is going to be up against the chipboard base and the bottom will be inside the chipboard base. So we don't need to cover those. Now, if you're going to do this as a standalone item and not make the chipboard base, then yes, do cover all of this stuff. But um, for my purposes, we're just gonna do the sides and the front. So for the sides, you're gonna need two pieces of pattern paper that are five and an eighth by four and seven eighths. Or excuse me, five, boy, I'll tell you what guys, 
five and a sixteenth inch tall. Okay, so I'm going to trim this just a hair to do that. Five and a sixteenth. And the reason why we're doing that is because of the angle of the top here. It's not quite like a 45 degree angle, so we got to take a little bit off to make it work right. And I don't know how to explain it other than to just show you. But this is going to go here on each side. So what we're going to do, um, this is the actual size of the box. Okay, so just to show you. The first box will be two and seven eighths, one inch, and then one and an eighth here, and then the different levels, and then where they land height wise. So then what I did for the pattern paper, I wanted to make it smaller. So what you're going to do is you're going to just cut a piece of scrap paper if you want to do it this way, or you're going to need to make some tick marks on your paper, um, which is easy to do. But anyways, we're going to measure up two and seven eighths, make a mark and then cut off the side is basically all we're going to do. I made a pattern so that if I wanna make this again, which I ended up doing, you know, I don't have to measure it again, but um, that's totally what we need to do. So let's go ahead. So we've got a piece that's four and seven eighths wide, five and sixteenths inch tall, and we're gonna measure up two and seven eighths, and we're gonna make a tick mark. And then we can draw the pencil line. And then we're gonna cut that off, okay? And if I look at my pattern, that should line up perfectly, which it worked out just great. So then what you can do is um, we're going to want one go in one direction, one go in the other direction. So you can either, when I showed you the other way, you could put them um, right sides facing. I want the cars on the outside. So I'm going to go ahead and just turn them like that. So I'll cut one angle this way and then the other one will be going this way and I'll have one for each side of the box. I hope that makes sense. Um, around my scissors, and then since I drew a line, you can use, you can go ahead and freestyle this. You can use your cutter if you want. Okay, I'm just gonna cut those off. Those should match. And then I have my two sides, one for each side. Okay, so then we're just gonna glue those on. And then we have a piece for the front that will be two and seven eighths by eight and a half. And that'll go on the front. Now, um, I was trying to use up some scraps here, and since some of it won't be showing, my scrap is not quite three inches wide, or excuse me, two and seven eighths inches wide, which is fine because it's gonna be inside my box. If you're not gonna make the chipboard box, then it's not gonna be a big deal. I mean, if you are going to make the chipboard box, it's not going to be a big deal. Okay. Does that make sense? Yikes. I'm not doing a very good job today. Sorry. I promise this will turn out in the end. I promise. Okay. So one side glued. The other side will do that. And it's just going to cover all of that. Make it nice and pretty. And then we'll work on the base. See, so even with my boo-boo, it didn't really matter because it's all covered up anyway. And then the bottom edges will be covered by the chipboard base. So that's okay too. Okay, there you have it. Okay, so then the front, like I said, my piece isn't quite um, wide enough, but when you look at this, it's going to be inside the base, this chipboard base. So it's not going to show this bottom part. So I'm not going to worry about it too much. And then that way I can kind of utilize my scrap and, you know, not waste, you know, another piece of paper. Which will be just fine. So, pardon my gray hair. Just gonna line that up. Try and get it straight. 
There we go. Okay. There we go. So again, if you're not going to make the chipboard, then you obviously will want to make sure that it's long enough to cover the whole front. All right. So we have that. Let's make the base. I get this out of the way and grab my stuff here. Now, the base is pretty easy to do. We're not going to need a lot of pattern paper for it um, because the box is going to be on the inside, so we don't have to cover the inside of it. And um, we just need to do two pieces. So we're going to do this kind of in a different um, way, different method. But what I started with was a back, the back piece that's going to stand up like this. And you're going to need a piece of chipboard that's eight and three quarters by five and a half. And then you need one piece of cardstock that's 10 and three quarters by seven and a half. And you're going to wrap it just like you were wrapping an album cover. Okay. So this will be on the inside. It's going to get covered up. And then we're going to put pattern paper on the back. Um, but that's what you're going to do. So the first part I went ahead and did, if you haven't seen how to wrap a piece of chipboard for like the, um, I use this in the lay flat method that Tammy came up with from Country Craft Creations. Um, I have a video on this. I'll put the link below, but you're basically just going to wrap your piece of chipboard for the back. And again, eight, three quarters by five and a half. And then the cardstock is 10 and three quarters by seven and a half. Now, then I was trying to figure out how to do this the absolute easiest way um, possible because the way that I did it, my prototype was pretty complicated. So I wanted to try and make it a lot easier to do. So this is what we're going to do. So you're going to need several pieces of chipboard. So the first piece, the base, is um, this is the bottom of the box is eight and three quarters by five and an eighth. Then you're going to need two pieces for the sides that are five and an eighth by one. And then one piece down here that's uh, eight and three quarters by one. And then you're going to need one piece of cardstock that's seven and a half by 12. Now, when I laid this down on, I put, you know, use score tape to lay all the pieces down. I measured a half inch from the bottom and I laid this one down right in the middle. I centered it right smack dab in the middle. And then I used a piece of my, <coughs> excuse me, my chipboard to put in between. And then that's how I butted up the bottom one when I laid that down so that there was, this is about a 16th of an inch. And I wanted to make sure that I had that 16th of an inch here for when we fold it up, we want to make sure that, you know, it has room to do that. So you do need that piece. So um, I, I have this as a three quarter inch spacer, you know, the spacers that you can get from Country Craft Creations. These are an inch wide. Um, sometimes I need one that's three quarters of an inch. So um, I took a piece of chipboard and I use that sometimes but then also it gives me that 16th of an inch when I do things like this and then um, I had some I found this tape and it's actually ruler tape and so I went ahead and put it on here so I can use it as a ruler too if I wanted to so anyway um, I just measured up a half an inch and centered this piece and then I used a piece of my chipboard and put that down and then I butted this up so that it was nice and even. And then I went ahead and did the same thing, put my chipboard piece down, put this piece down, and then did the same thing for the other side, okay? So you'll have a half an inch on each side, you'll have a half an inch on the bottom, and you have about a three quarter of an inch at the top. It's the way it worked out. Um, so then we're gonna do a little bit of cutting and I'm just gonna take my scissors here and we're gonna make some tabs. So I'm gonna cut straight up the side of that chipboard. And then I'm just going to make a little tab at the end here. And then I'm gonna cut just to the corner of this chipboard. So when we do this, take this out, take that out, and then I'm just gonna trim this up a little bit. You should have a corner that looks like that. So you're going to cut straight up the side of the chipboard. So what this is going to do is we're going to take this, we're going to put this together, and then we're going to wrap this around. And then we're going to go ahead and cover it with pattern paper. It's going to cover the edges of the chipboard, but you're not going to see the inside anyway because the boxes will be inside. These pieces here will fold over and give us a nice edge for the top of our chipboard. So basically what you're going to do is you're going to do that for all, um, for the corners here. Um, down below. So the, this is the front of the box. So again, we're just going to take our scissors and if it's easier for you to use a knife, 
you can totally do that. And I probably should do that for this one because it's not working very well. So hold on just a second. And I'm hopelessly right-handed, so I can't do it with my left hand. So you can use your knife, go down the side like that. And then you're going to just make a straight cut here, okay? And that will wrap around the chipboard. You can see that. And then we're just going to angle this down like so and create a nice tab. Okay, so your two bottom corners should look like that. Now the top corners, we're going to make a tab. We are going to make a tab because this is going to be the attachment for the back. All right, so let's go ahead and grab our scissors. This will probably be easier with scissors. So I'm going to make a little cut here and go right in on the crease there on the score. Okay, and then this one goes straight. Okay, so you make a straight cut here, make a tab, make a tab. This is a way of doing it so that you don't have to piece a bunch of pieces together. When I did my prototype, I pieced all of this together with different pieces of cardstock. And it was a little complicated, and I thought there's got to be an easier way. So I went ahead and did it this way. Okay, so then the next thing, go ahead and turn it over and grab your tool. And then just go around the edges, because we're going to fold those over the edges of your chipboard. All right, like so. And actually, we need to do the tabs too because that will be folding over too. So we'll do that. Okay. And then grab um, your score tape. And we're going to do this kind of like we're wrapping an album, but we're just wrapping a box. And if I can find the end of my tape, there we are. All right, so... Not on that. We're going to do the sides. Okay, so do the side. So I'm just going to put that down there. I'm going to put a piece here. And, and then I'm going to grab a little bit of my glue and I'm going to put right on that edge. And I'm going to fold that over. And burnish that down and it'll cover that edge nicely okay you can see that okay and then we're going to just repeat in the front Cover the edges nicely. Okay. Then I'm going to do the same thing for here. I'm using my fingernail to kind of push it down as I, you know, scooch across the score tape before I cut it or tear it, I should say. <laughs> we go okay so now we have our pieces that are covered so these are the edges of the box that are completely covered now and then I'm just going to run my bone folder across the edges just to square them up a little bit okay just like that all right, so then you can see that when we fold this up, we're just going to wrap those tabs around, and then that's going to go ahead and adhere it together. And 
um, the box will be formed when we do that. So then this tab here is going to adhere to the back of the box and we're going to cover the back of the box. Now you can do, you can do the front of the back. I'm going to do on the back just so that it's kind of stays, um, you know, kind of the way we're building it so you can see how it goes, but that's why we mitered the corners. So I'm going to go ahead and use my glue on this one. Uh oh, I got a dog running around. After I glue this, I better go see what he's up to. Because I don't trust him sometimes when he's running around. All right, so get this out of the way. I'm going to use this just to keep that eighth inch, or excuse me, that sixteenth inch that I want. Now you can eyeball this if you want to. And then I'm just going to go and line that up so that it matches the bottom of the box. Okay, press that down. Go back here, make sure that's down. Okay, and I'm going to go check on my dog and I will be right back. Now that we have the back on here, so we're just basically going to make our box now. So we're going to fold these up, we're going to glue them around, and we're going to glue the tabs down. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add glue here, and then I'm going to add it right to the corners here. And then when you bring it up, just kind of bring it up to the right angle and then press it around. Unfortunately, I don't have a clamp that will help with this part. So you're gonna have to hold it, you know, and let it set. But again, art glitter glue works pretty darn fast. So it works pretty good, pretty quickly. Okay, so I'm just gonna do that. And the tabs will get covered up with patterned paper, so you don't have to worry about that. Okay. And I'm basically going to just do that all the way around. I'm going to put some glue here. I'm going to fold that up. And wrap my tab around. and press that down, okay? And that's all there is to that. Now, this doesn't seem like it's gonna be very sturdy, but we're gonna put our box in there too. And then um, we're gonna kind of glue the box into, you know, the inner boxes into this outer deal. So again, the reason why I did this is because my husband wanted to put remotes in here and wanted to make sure I wanted to make sure that it was going to be sturdy enough to do that. So you don't have to do this if you don't want to. Totally up to you. So these will fold up and do the same exact thing. So I'm going to put some glue. These front ones will be a little bit easier to deal with because you can actually put the clamp on there and help hold it. Okay, like so. I'm just going to hold it for a second before I put the clamps on just to make sure that everything stays. Okay. There we go. So there is the the base of our box. So then take that out. So the pattern paper is going to go on the outside. You're going to need a piece that's eight and five eighths by eight and eight and five eighths by five and three eighths, and then you will need two pieces that are five by seven eighths, and then you will need a piece that's five, excuse me, eight and five eighths by seven eighths to cover just the outside pieces. 
So I'm going to go ahead and do this. Put my glue on. Decorate the back there. And then I've got some really cute um, things to just share with you. Not really tutorials per se, but some ideas. If you make this, like some things that you could put in it or with it to make it kind of a complete gift set, um, which I kind of like did kind of quickly, but um, fun to do. Fun to do. So I'm just going to cover the back of that. And then you can decorate if you want, depending on what you want to do. Okay, so that's covered. Then we can put our sides on. I love this plaid. This plaid is really super cool. And I love the colors, they're just awesome. All right, dump my glue over because I always have to do that, right? I think every single video I do, I dump my glue over. <laughs> okay. Okay. And then we'll do this side. Make sure. And then I came up with a folio, and I'm hoping to get that filmed today as well and get that published today or tomorrow. I'm going to get this one definitely done today, but um, the, get the other one done too. Um, so that way everybody has time, depending on what they want to make for Father's Day using this paper. So... Okay. So cover the front. We'll cover the tabs nicely. You can put feet on this if you wanted to. Um, you know, there's all kinds of different things. There's there's different things that you could totally do. Okay, so here's our little tray. All right, so that'll help provide some um, strength for our boxes. So this should just pop right in. And there you have it. There's your project. So all we need to do now is just basically glue it in here so that the whole project is kind of reinforced. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to glue everywhere. And then we'll just pop it in and then it'll be good to go. So I'm put some glue on the back. It'll help stabilize it, keep it in place like that. Perfect. And just set it right down in there and then we are done. So then you can just kind of Make sure that everything is pressed together. And then you have your organizer box. I just think this is super cute. There is um, a little, now on the on my <clears throat> prototype, the back actually ended up being just a little bit smaller than the back of the boxes. I wanted to make it a little bit bigger back here. Um, so I did do that just to give it a little bit more strength in the back, um, especially since he wanted to put remotes and things in there. So there, there's our, there's our project guys. Um, now I wish I could use rubber bands to help kind of hold that down, but I can't because I'm allergic to chemicals that they use in them. So if you have rubber bands, you can wrap rubber bands around here to kind of help hold it down and make sure it's glued in. But I think we're pretty good. And then you can make, you can use your tool here, press that down, and then you have your organizer box. I just think 
Oh my gosh, this turned out super cute. I just love this. So let me show you the different little goodies that I made that I thought might be kind of fun to add to this as a gift since it is a desk organizer. So um, one of the things that I did do was um, I made, the, this is just a notepad. This is just a five by eight notepad from um, the office store. And I took a piece of scrap and I covered the top so you don't see the, the brand name on there. And then these are some Tim Holtz, um, what did he call, what are they called? They're called um, hardware heads. And I just glued them right on there so it looks pretty um, cool. I like that. And then I made, um, this is another little, just a little notebook. This is a three by five notepad. I covered this um, again with the pattern paper just so it covers the notebook. And this is just a simple little folder that I created with the scraps. And you can see I pieced some together. I used one of the cut aparts and just put on the front. And I thought it kind of tied into the car theme on one of the dividers. And then this is refillable. So if he um, uses that up, he can totally have another one um, to add to it. And I did make a second one um, for that. And then, let's see, post-it notes are always good. So I just made a super simple post-it notebook um, with some of the scraps that I had. And that turned out really cute. And then um, I will have a link. I got to find the tutorial. But um, Kim Rannells from um, Country Craft Creations did a really cool um, altered kind of Rolodex project. And I did it on a miniature scale that I thought he could use his business cards for. So I made this was a little notebook that I got from the office store that they were clearancing. And I got it for like two bucks. And I went ahead and folded the pages and use some of the pattern paper because I thought like the color matched perfectly. So um, I did that. And then I put a couple of the cut apart pieces in here. And then he could put his business cards and stuff like that in there. So I thought that would be kind of cool for him. And it's not, you know, it's it's very functional and it's really cute. And I put a, a few things in there and um, hopefully he's okay with that. <laughs> It doesn't get in his way of the business cards because, you know, um, but uh, that turned out really, really super cute. So this is a super simple project. I'll link Kim's video because that's where um, I got the inspiration to do it on a smaller scale for business cards. So anyways, there is my project for Father's Day using Retro Men. And um, it was really, really fun to play with. I just love this project. So I got another one coming. It's a folio. It's going to be really, really cool. Um, but this is my desk organizer or desk caddy, I should say. And um, this is going to be an awesome little project for you for Father's Day. And you could fill it with all kinds of different things. Fill it with whatever you like. Um, if you have a fisherman in your life, use the fishing papers. And then, you know, you could put lures and all kinds of stuff in there. But anyway, there you go. There's my project. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, thank you for putting up with my goofs. And um, have a really awesome day. Stay crafty. I'll see you in a little bit with a new tutorial. Bye-bye.